problem we've been talking about for the last two years. And this problem is, what are our obligations in this time of war? What must we do? And by divine providence, I received a letter this week. I was able to speak to a lady who gave me permission to speak about her case. A Vietnamese lady. And her journey to the faith. Now there are two journeys. And two theological views are meeting at a crossroads. And one of them is, you cannot preserve your faith unless you have Mass every Sunday. Unless you learn the Catechism. But his father said last week, do you know the 12 fruits of the Holy Ghost? You don't know the 12 fruits of the Holy Ghost. You need to study the catechism. You need to have weekly and regular catechisms. You need to have mass every Sunday. Or as he mentioned in the sermon in Danbury, who will take care of your old saints day party? Who will be able to gather these things and teach you about the saints? If we don't have a mass every Sunday... And then also, of course, that if you don't have Mass every Sunday and you don't have a stable environment, you'll be going to different Masses, as many of you are doing. We tell you not to do it, but we understand it's hard times. You must make those choices on your own by the grace of God, and we don't condemn you. But we do warn you, it's very dangerous to go to places where they are not professing the true and holy faith as it should be professed. And it is dangerous to your soul. We've already seen many millions of souls be torn away in the last 40 years. And so it, the same causes produce the same effects. Now here we go again. And so you cannot have the regular Mass. How are you going to build? You can't have the regular Mass. How are you going to persevere? And so I was speaking to Father Ortiz earlier today and yesterday. We must tell the people, what is the fight? Is it a fight about the weekly Mass? If it is, the weekly Mass is available in St. Anthony's. The weekly Mass is available in the adult they have a better choir than we do. Our choir just quality just went down the last few weeks. <laughs> we lost our good choir. So in any case, so they've got a better choir. And so they, they have the Latin Mass. They've got more incense. But what are we here for? What we have done in the last two years is only try to preserve the work of our sister Marcella Feth. Not because of him, because he was only a bishop. He was just a bishop. The hat that was put upon his head with two horns, it was not his hat. It was not his helmet. It was a helmet passed down to him by bishops who came before him. And by bishops who came before him. Something like the opposite of the antlers on the side of the ass. Many of the animals, they lose their antlers every year. And so they get new antlers. But in the Catholic Church, the horns stay and the creature dies. <laughs> and someone else comes on to put on the horns. So one bishop dies and another bishop puts on the horns of the two testaments. Then that bishop dies and another bishop takes on the horn of those two testaments. And that bishop dies and another bishop puts on the horn of the two testaments. It's like the opposite of the antlers. Instead of the antler decaying away, it's the bishop that decays away. It's the priest that decays away. And so what is the future? What is the other view? Is there another way to receive Jesus Christ in your heart than Mass every Sunday? Is there another way to persevere in the faith without Mass every Sunday? Is there another way to have their faith deepened without reading the catechism books? And the answer is yes. And I believe the Blessed Virgin Mary in heaven sent me an example only a few days ago. And by, the, by divine providence, it came from the same place. From the same place where Father Dejas was saying Mass. Mm. A lady, a Vietnamese, she wrote and said, I stupid. I don't know how to read or write well. I'm not smart. But someone told me that my family, which abused me so much, beat me so much when I was a little child, that even though they have done wrong, that if the poor souls receive 30 masses, that they will be released from purgatory. And so I have done the math, and they should give $50 for one mass, 
30 masses times $50 times the seven souls of my family that I want to pray for, it goes $10,500. I don't have $10,500. I am, I am not working, I'm sick and getting old. But I will send what I have. I send you the $50. To say as many masses as are in your heart. And that we can try to send each month something to say the masses for all my family. And at the end of the letter, I don't know much, but I know that these new priests in the Vatican II is wrong. And she left her number, so I called her. Oh, what happened? Well, when I was a little girl, I was beaten every day by my parents in Vietnam. Of course, she was baptized a Catholic, but not really raised so much in the church. The family was not intelligent. They were not well formed, but they were Catholic. And they beat her every day and abused her every day from the time she was a little baby until she was 20 years old. She said, I never denied God, but I went away from God. I never hated God, but I said, God, where is your power? God, where is your power? Why is it you make the innocent suffer? Why you do what you do? I don't know, Father. I don't know, Lord. I don't know. And so I don't pray. But I still want to be good. Finally, at the age of 20, it was 1975, and the Americans were going out of Vietnam. The last pilot, the last American pilot to fly out of Vietnam, he had a Vietnamese girl that he loved and he was going to marry. And this girl at the age of 20, she ran over to the Vietnamese lady who was uh, the friend of this American to be her maid. The Americans, they were not Catholic, neither of them. And the Americans said, well, take a little, get the little girl along. We'll bring her with us. Throw her on the plane. And so they threw her on one of the last planes that flew out of Vietnam. She arrived in America. And then she had many experiences, but still not knowing to pray to God. It was non-Catholics that brought her out. And then there was a girl that was raped, a Vietnamese girl, by a Vietnamese man, and she was left alone. So she said, I'll help this girl. And she helped her get back on her feet, helped her get over the trouble. And the old girl said, I don't have any money. But, and this was in about mid-70s, 76, 77, I don't have any money, but I will give you a gift. Here is a rosary. So she took the rosary, but she did not know how to say the rosary. She did not know how to pray it. She knew it had something to do with Mary. And she remembered when she was a child, she had learned how to say the Hail Mary. So she somehow thought the Hail Mary and the Rosary must go together. And so she would say once in a while a Hail Mary. But she didn't know about the Rosary, but she thought it was holy. And so she decided to sleep with the Rosary. So she slept with it. And she would have dreams. Dreams about our times, dreams about the terrible things going on in the world. And she felt her soul beginning to change as Mary was guiding her. And finally, about eight years later, in the early 80s, she got very sick. She went to help another family, a man who was a drunkard and not living a good life, and had six children. She said, I will take you with me. We'll go to Texas and I'll give you a good job. And you stop your drinking. You stop your bad life. Then you straighten up. Then you bring your wife here. And so he did. And she worked and worked. And then she became sick. And when she came over to America, she would try to go to Mass. Because she was Catholic. But she said, God is not there. God is not in that priest. Where is God? He's not there. And she looked at the altar and said, he's not there. God is not there. I want God, so I won't go to this Mass. And so she stopped going to the Mass and she just slept with her rosary. Finally, she understood in 1983 that the rosary was a prayer. And that you should say this prayer. And that this prayer would save souls and save lives. So she began to say the rosary every day from then until now. And as time progressed... She learned more things. One thing she told me the first time I spoke with her earlier this week. You know, one thing I learned is divine mercy is bad. 
Divine mercy prayer is bad. It's not for Mary. Because in 1917, the Holy Mother Mary, she appeared in Fatima and she said, Pray the rosary. Pray the rosary before sinners. That's the answer. And she did not say, the divine mercy came after 1917. And therefore, why didn't she say, say the rosary and the divine mercy? She didn't say that. So divine mercy is not from Mary. It's not from God. It's no good. And furthermore, the divine mercy comes from Vatican II. God is not there. And she became stronger in her faith without going to Mass. Only by sleeping with the rosary. And only after eight years of sleeping with a rosary did she learn how to pray a rosary. And then she learned more about Our Lady of Fatima, about the bad people trying to take over the world. And she wanted the true faith. Finally, when she was sick, she realized, I know I haven't gone to church. She became sick for a year and thought about these things and learned how to pray the rosary during that year. And then she said, I, I want to keep the faith. I must go to Mass. So she started going to the Mass. The new Mass. She tried for many years. She said, God is not here. And then finally one day, in about 2002, she said, God, I can no longer go to this Mass. And no one told her. She didn't read the Baltimore Catechism. She did not know all the thick words. She didn't know all of the answers to the questions in the catechism. But she knew that God is not here. She said, Father, I cannot go anymore to this place. It's not of God. There should be left. And continued to pray. And then finally, they asked her, how did she find out about the resistance? How did she find out about us? And she said that she felt that I must go here. Our Lady sometime inspire. I must go here. So I click and I see about the holy souls. Because I want the answer to the Holy Souls. And so she then contacted me and sent a letter to Kentucky. And so what is the cause of preservation of faith? Speaking to her again just recently. How did you preserve the faith? She said, I preserved the faith because the seed of faith was there at baptism. And I wanted to be good. And Mary spoke to me. And how can we be saints? The Blessed Virgin Mary said, She will protect her dear ones. And it's a mistake to want to be protected. What we must do is be her dear ones. What are we going to do? One temptation is the temptation of security. And this is the temptation that is attacking the resistance that we've mentioned in the last two years many, many times. And now this temptation has hit our parish. Security. The priest wants security because he wants, as Father said last week, I will take care of those people that take care of me. He told me that. I will walk the extra mile for those who walk the extra mile for me. And I will teach them the truth who want to come with me. So they will learn the truth. But what about the others? What about the 1 billion, 200 million other Catholics out there? What about the other 7, 6 billion, almost 7 billion people? What about these souls that are being dragged down into hell by the devil in a great fight between heaven and hell? Today is the feast of all saints. All saints is not only the feast by which we say we honor all the saints in heaven, but it is a feast by which we say to all men, all men. And there are more than 7 billion on the planet earth now. All must become saints. Everyone must choose. Do we want to fight for God? Do we want to go to heaven? What are we to do? And she said, I don't understand. To this Vietnamese girl. I don't understand why there are so many weak people today. Because... Many times I call on Joseph, St. Joseph. Whenever I have any needs, I call on St. Joseph. Say, Joseph, I am not worthy to be your son, but you are my father. This is how she speaks to Joseph. And you have an obligation to take care of me. So don't fool around. I ask for something that is not a sin. 
I ask for something that is not harming to souls. I ask for something good. You give it to me because you are my father. And Joseph always gives. And why are we afraid? She told me earlier, we are afraid, but it is foolish to be afraid. Because Joseph, he is the protector. Saint Joseph is the provider. Saint Joseph is the defender. And he will not allow anyone to lay a hand on his wife. Go to Joseph. And he will protect Mary. And then go to Mary. A girl that never studied catechism. Never read a catechism book. Who only hold a rosary in her hand. And learned how to say a Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. Then you go to Mary. And she will not allow anyone to touch her son. And she hates compromise. And Mary wants soldiers who are ready to fight. Do you not know, says this woman, that we are in the great fight? We are in the great fight. Between heaven and hell. And the Holy Mother does not want weaklings in the army. She wants soldiers. And what are we to do? Every one of us must stand up and fight. And we must recognize that when one sheep is lost, the army of God is smaller. And we don't want the army of God to become smaller. Therefore we go after the lost sheep. We have to recognize that we are on the side of the great victory. As we've said many times in the last two years. And we cannot fall into the trap. Now it has happened again. This battle will continue. It will continue. I believe what has happened is what Sister Lucy calls a diabolical disorientation. The devil has disoriented the soul. Well, what do we stand for? We stand for the faith. And we say, and it is the opinion of myself, that every priest of the Society of St. Pius X, we are members of the Society of St. Pius X. It is an organization, it is a society, an order of the Holy Mother Church, founded to fight the devil in our times. It was founded by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre as a global organization from the very beginning. From the first day, there were Americans, and there were French and there were South Americans. And there were people from all over the world in our society from the first day in 1970. And it has been international from the beginning. And God has blessed our little seminary in Kentucky, which now has 12 seminarians. They are from India. They are from the Philippines. One came from Poland. Didn't last very long, but he came from Poland. And from England. And from the United States. And from Canada. And from Brazil. Why? And some are coming from Africa, from Brazil, and Paraguay. Paraguay already here. Mm. Because though we are small, we are continuing the work of Archbishop Marcel of Hith, which is to spread the Holy Roman Catholic faith throughout the entire world. And we will come to the sheep, and then we will leave the sheep, and say, take this bread, Take the bread we give you and make it last until the next time we come back. Mm. Take a morsel each day. Maybe Elias will show up in your house when you only have one day left. And he will give you enough porridge to last another day and another day and another day and another day and another day, and another day until the Padre can come back. Mm. Already several times, being gone many times, some of the missions already coming back. Father, you've been gone for a long time. If you didn't show up today, we're going to kill each other. <laughs> it was going to be death. <laughs> Good thing you showed up today, Father, because we couldn't take it another day. I didn't know that. That's how the plane tickets worked out. <laughs> but God knows. The Holy Mother knows. <clears throat> and then we have how did she learn the faith? Because the Holy Mother gave it to her and she said she said, she knows more about Joseph than I know about Joseph. This little Vietnamese girl, she knows more about Mary than I know about Mary. <clears throat> because she slept with a rosary every day. And so, what are we to do? How 
are we going to win this war? We know that God is going to win. And we know that we are weak sinners. But we cannot stand upon our popularity. We cannot stand upon our strength. We must stand upon the holy rock of the faith. And what has happened is this time is there is a war. And let them mock and say there is a division in the resistance. Let them mock. Let them spread their gossip upon the internet whichever way they wish. We stand for Christ. We stand for the holy truth. And if we must go, we must go. I know the history of the society of St. Pius X. And so does Father Zendejas. Many, many times we have been expelled from our parishes. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Montana, Helena. So many other places. Cincinnati, Ohio, near my home. We were expelled. In 1983. We have been expelled from our parishes in Long Island, Oyster Bay. My other parish also in that territory. But we lost Oyster Bay. We lost Cincinnati. We lost Helena, Montana. We lost uh, the Rapids, uh, not Sioux Falls, but Sturgis, South Dakota. And many, many other places. But God saw to it that the society of St. Pius X was not lost. And some of those places are no longer chapels anymore. Others have divided into many other chapels. And others we have been able to come back. Others we have lost forever. God only knows the end results. But we must say, we are not going to operate in the dark. We are going to operate in the, war, in the open. In the open, we do have a solution. We know the solution to the church crisis. It is the love of Mary. It is holding on to our holy Roman faith until death, with or without Mass. With or without it. So many of our ancestors have gone so long without the Mass. Not just the Japanese for 200 years. But so many have gone so long without the Mass. But they can't go a second. They can't go a moment. They can't go an instant without the holy faith. And the faith is clear. The faith is certain. The faith does not have doubt in it. And the faith is bigger than all of us. We can journey into its depths all our lives. And a girl who couldn't read, doesn't know anything, will teach us more. <laughs> because the Holy Mother guides. And we fight for the truth. But we will not stop by the grace of God. We can fall today. We can turn into heretics today. We can turn the enemies of God today. Only by the protection of our Holy Mother, only by the protection of grace, can we persevere another second. But so long as God allows... And so long as we stand for the truth of this sacred vision, and why are people contacting us throughout the world? They don't care about Father Hugo and Father Pfeiffer and Father Giselle and all the other priests. They don't care about us. We wish they did, but they don't. <laughs> the fact is, we want the faith. We don't care which bishop has his head between the antlers. <laughs> He just better be whacking some wolves. He better be protecting our food. He better be standing for the truth. And if he can't do it, kill him. And get another one to take over between the antlers. It is the faith that we need. And we are useless servants, each one of us. And so, but this is the way it must be if we are going to follow Our Lady. Perhaps I am making a mistake. There are many mistakes. We all make mistakes. But I believe that the lady that God sent to me this week was sent from heaven. And I think that she knows more about the supernatural life. Because she slept with a rosary. How are we going to be saints? We are all weak. We all make mistakes. We all do foolish things. And everyone can repent. And God wants everyone to repent. So even if a terrible thing has happened, it can be healed, cured. It can be healed. It's not the end of the world. <clears throat> so, we hope that it is cured. We hope that it is healed. And we pray that we never change this vision. We must do what our fathers have done. And we must be apostolic. We must be, because there is a crisis of souls throughout the world. I think of a restaurant in India, in Calcutta, 
You sit at the restaurant and you eat. And you have very good food. And you are full. And in the street, just next to you, is a woman dying of starvation. The food that is left over is fed to the dogs. And if anyone gives food to that lady that is dying, he is beaten. And the food is taken from her. And she dies of starvation right there in the streets. And I firmly believe that if souls decide, and this is only my opinion, but I firmly believe that if souls decide, I will have my comfortable mass, I will have my comfortable catechism, I will have my comfortable needs taken care of, and those that are outside of my realm, let them die, let them starve, let them receive nothing. Because that's not my problem. These will be turned away from by Our Lady. She will turn away. And when the great fight comes, you will have a thousand hosts in your mouth. Another only one. You will have a thousand catechism questions memorized. Another only one. And when the devil comes, you will run. And will not fight. And will turn away from God. We must follow the principle. That our master followed. Which is to lay down our life for our sheep. The other principle is. To take care of ourselves. And take care of our own strength. And to hell with the sheep. And to hell with the shepherds. And to hell with all the others. So long as I take care of myself. And our Lord Jesus Christ said. If you take care of yourself and your own. What makes you different from the enemies of God? For the enemies of God do this. What makes the gospel different? We must go out of ourselves. Like several of our faithful said. Father. Father you don't need to come. To Malaysia. We're only one family. If you can come once a year, once a year and a half, that's fine. There are other sheep. We are only one family in a small corner of the world. If you can come, we are very happy. But take care of the sheep. And so, planes pass through Malaysia. And we get 10 hour layovers. And we are able to go and visit the sheep. God will arrange. He will make sure that what we need will be given to us if only we stand for the faith above the sacraments. The faith above everything else. And so in this great fight, we must become saints. And we cannot become saints if we don't love Mary. If we don't hold on to our rosaries. We make sure the rosary hangs in the mirror in your car. Make sure it is in your pocket. Make sure it is in your purse. <clears throat> Remember three children did not know how to say the rosary either. Hail Mary, Holy Mary. But they knew how to play. <laughs> and they didn't want to skip the rosary. But they didn't want to go for the whole 15 minutes. Because they needed to play. And so they said Hail Mary, Holy Mary. Hail Mary, Holy Mary. Hail Mary, Holy Mary. And the Holy Mary came. And spoke to them. The Holy Mary didn't come to more pious children that said the whole prayer. Mm. The Holy Mary came to those three children who didn't even say the whole prayer. Mm. Mary has not changed. And she even told them, I'm very happy you said Hail Mary and Holy Mary. But I'll be even more happy if you say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I would be more happy if you say that. We want you to be more happy. So we will say all those prayers. <coughs> Remember, sanctity was not built by external things. It is built by the influx of the grace of God handed out by His Holy Mother, who is the mediatrix of all grace. 
And she hands out to whom she pushes. She poured all that grace and dismiss, and the most wicked man became the greatest saint. She poured all that grace into Augustine, and the most wicked and proud, obnoxious man and heretic became the greatest of the fathers of the church. And she also poured it out into the innocent. She didn't only pour it out into the guilty. She pours it wherever she wants to pour it. Let us stand and open our mouths like the little bird. She sits in the nest and opens his mouth, hoping that mommy will come and put good things in her mouth. <coughs> For the little bird cannot fly, doesn't know how to fly, cannot go out and catch his own meat, but what he can do is look up. And what he can do is open his mouth and so we should not be greatly discouraged in this fight that we have so few masses. And God will give us the ones that we need. And we are in a point where suddenly we must make a decision. We can't schedule these points. Well, here we are. Let us make a decision. And hopefully, in the due time, in the future, things will go better. This is only one day in a war. Only one day. But let us pray that God make us faithful to become saints. By holding the rosary. And realizing while we must study our catechism to the best of our ability. It is not that book that will save us. It is the mother. It is Jesus Christ who is the truth. He is the one that spoke all the truth contained in that holy book. Of the catechism and the holy book of sacred scripture. And we hold all those truths. We hold them all. When we hold the rosary. And let us try to become saints and stand firm for the truth and let this battle be waged. If they want to come and wage war, I do not choose to fight as it says in Henry V. I do not choose to fight as we are, nor as we are shall we shun a battle. And so we must persevere. And I really believe the souls are in danger. Therefore, I must do the duty of the shepherd. And if I make a mistake, then it is a mistake. But I will do the duty of the shepherd as best as I can, even though I am a sinner and have made many foolish choices and may be making another one today. Only God knows. But we will stand. And I pray that God give the grace that we be ready to die for our sheep. That's what must happen. All the sheep, all the souls, and any soul that needs to be died for. Our Lord died for all the souls. We must be ready to die for all the souls. And we beg the grace to be able to do that. And how are we going to become saints? The rosary, the prayer, the rosary, the beads, the rosary in our hands, the rosary in sleep. And somehow Mary will teach us the way to the truth. So never let go of the rosary. <coughs> then she will give us the scapular and the other tools, such simple weapons, the devil cannot defeat. Hosea, God bless you all, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.